Well, uh, it is a spin-off from the other uh, series we did, uh, Stockholm Requiem, uh, that we did four years ago. I just looked it up. Uh, and uh, I was very fond of a few of the characters, Alex and Frederica's characters. Uh, we are following them now through. And um, so happy to reinvent them, but in a different setting, which is fun. Uh, and also, I had I had great doubts about telling a story about terrorism, acts of terrorism, because of what the world looks like. So we had to kind of find a way to do that so that it felt okay and that we didn't, you know, pour uh, fuel on the fires that are going on around the world. So we, we focused very much on uh, uh, trying to challenge people's preconceptions of what a terrorist act could be. Uh, whereas in this case, there are other reasons behind it than religious or political. It's, it's more an act of revenge. It's more about a young girl trying to put things right for her lost boyfriend. So it's, it's, a, it's a crime of passion, really. And I like that. And I, I can identify with that. I can understand why she's doing what she's doing. And now it goes a little bit wrong. I won't tell you how, but it goes a bit wrong. Uh, for her, but she's got the best intentions. She just wants to reveal some secret that has been buried by, you know, different people in the, in the power positions. So I think she's doing the right thing. I'm with her. <laughs> but I'm also with the, the other characters, with their struggles. And there are a lot of these characters that you can identify with, I feel. And it's made, obviously, by the fantastic screenwriter, Max Barron who's done a great job of weaving this story together and with all the different layers of storytelling, it's quite a complicated, it's like a house of cards. You know, if you take away one line in a scene, which sometimes we had to do, it's like, oh no, everything's <laughs> it's falling up. We can't, we can't tell, we need to put it back. You know, it's been so hard to tell this story, such a delicate weave of, it's like a cobweb of, of uh, things. I mean, it's, there's no resting in the, viewing this story. You have to stay as on high alert, uh, like like the people in CIA and and Seppel. So I'm playing Alex Recht, a former policeman uh, investigator uh, who's uh, who's recently stopped, uh, and this was um, stopped working and started to, to drive a cab. This was in a previous series that uh, we did. Uh, that Karin directed as well. Uh, so this is a this is a new story with a with the same character only years later, uh, and I uh, I found that character quite intriguing. Uh, he's a, he's kind of a mysterious guy. He, he's torn down by his work for so many years in being so much trouble in the streets and uh, starting to debate with himself whether he, he should work with it or not. And uh, now he's, he's in a <laughs> all-time low, I guess you can say, when, when this uh, this period starts. And he has a son, uh, Eric, who's a co-pilot. Uh, and, uh, and Eric happens to be on this plane that is uh, hijacked. So uh, Alex uh, is... is it's becoming a part of the group who's trying to get the plane down uh, and trying to uh, figure out what is happening. So he, he ha has to work as an investigator again, although he has his son up in the air and is emotionally invested in it. And I thought that was a, a that's an interesting part, you know, to have this uh, solving the mystery and yet being so emotionally invested in it and, and how do you do that do you are you able to turn off your feelings uh because you have to or or, or you, you can't be you, you can't just uh, lucid everything <laughs> but on the other hand it's your children it's your child so i i thought that was uh, challenging it's funny though you know once you've played a part it, it becomes like a part of yourself. <laughs> you, you, you carry you carry them with you, all your parts. <laughs> uh, that's uh, uh, 
that's frightening. <laughs> uh, but but I, I guess it is. You know, you, you have them back there somewhere. So it's uh, if it's if if it's a part you really liked doing, uh, whether it's a nice part or, or or you know a bad guy or something. If you, if you like working with them, I, th I think it's pretty easy to get back there again. And and if it's a if it's a challenge like this one, you know, you put the character in an interesting situation. I think it's really a treat. You know, it's 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 really fun. You don't really know what happened there, but but I I, I think that's that's also interesting. You know, thinking about what 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 have what have we done? So I I don't think in this story it, it isn't that long because uh, it's it's a little tighter too. So I I just figured he. He stopped driving cab because he, he wasn't really suitable for that either. <laughs> so, uh, and then he he's done more or less nothing. So so in a way this is also and he he spoiler alert he <laughs> in the end he says uh, I might get back to the police I, I I might join the police again I'm thinking about joining the police again so it's it's also a journey in the other direction. To me, that's new. I've never done a thriller before, so I had to discover how to do that. And it's all about cliffhangers, basically. And every ten minutes, it's like, oh, shit. But it's, but it's, it's interesting what you what what you can use to create that. And for me, I'm not an action-driven director. Uh, I, I like the kind of the boiling under the surface kind of mode with the tension with the. So we, we've been working with that and with what isn't always said, but what hopefully the audience will think while they watch it, you know, that they can fill in themselves. And I don't like to overtell. I quite like to keep the audience also active. So that's been a challenge. And it's been interesting for me because I've done drama mainly, but I've done some crime and I've done property. But this is a totally different genre, and it's it's really interesting to dive into it and understand what things tick and what things work and what things don't work. So I did a lot of that studying before. Sometimes you're diving into dark waters, but uh, I would watch thrillers that I like and try and discover what how how they work and the engine. And I spend a lot of time with the scripts. Uh, and with the scripts writers and you know we back and forward back and forward all the time and I spent a lot of time rehearsing with the actors or to see how we can in different ways kind of uh, push the characters to kind of tension and then like an emotional release also for identification of course so that they can can also contribute to the ticking clock in different ways in different expressions so that's been fun. It's always fun to work with actors around these things, uh, rather than working alone in your little, you know, office, in a dark office, in a cellar. So, yeah. For me, it's been extremely inspiring to work in Belgium. For one thing, you know, you have a whole new country of locations that you've never shot before. It was like Christmas every day and such beautiful architecture with that brutalistic stuff that I like because uh, I'm born in the 60s, so I love all that. Uh, and then it was exciting to meet a crew from another. And I think it feels that it's opening up a bit now. It feels like, you know, I'm being approached by different people from different corners of the world and it feels like it's opening up. And, you know, you can always translate things. So <laughs> I think people are thinking bigger now. It's, it's a nice feeling. Although COVID has made us confined, now it's really opening. I think it's really fun. It, and, and I think it's, it has been for years now, except for the pandem pandemic years, of course. But I think it began already earlier that, that uh, even American companies are coming to Europe and, and, and you get parts in, uh, I got parts in, in uh, English uh, TV series and, and in American feature movies and, 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 and also the European companies creating stuff for, for a broader audience. And I think that's just great. I mean, it's, it's, it's nice for all of us. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's make the, it, make, it makes your uh, 
it makes uh, your uh, it widens your world, I think, and, and, and your mind. I think it's it's a good thing for all for all of us.